What's up, everybody? It is your friendly neighborhood gamer, PTK Blam, back with another episode of the Shop Podcast. How's everybody doing this beautiful Saturday afternoon? Thank you guys once again for joining me and the panel as we talk all things games. I do have a special, special guest today. Kind of ironic. Me and him were just talking before the podcast started. And I, I believe Noof has been on here before. I'm not 100% sure, but I got to go back in the archives. But I'm pretty damn sure he's been on here before. But I am going to go ahead and let him, let him speak for himself first. I'm a huge fan of your Noof. I look at you. You're like the Rodney Dangerfield of the Xbox community. <laughs> that serious. So That's a great that, compliment. That, actually. Yeah. I'll take that one. <laughs> you can put it on a bumper sticker, by the way. You can copyright that. I won't even charge you for it. No big deal. Uh, anyway, go, go ahead and shout out yourself, Noof, man. Appreciate you being here, brother. It's always going to be here, man. Boom, boom, kaboom. Noof is in the room. Last time I was on the shop podcast, my penis was two and a half inches long. Now it's three. So there you go. It's growing <laughs> a little bit. So uh, it's going to be a great show, guys. We're here to talk some games. Yes, bring a little no chills to the shop, uh, but we're re ready to go. It's going to be a good one. So uh, thanks for the invite and glad I could uh, turn up. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. And we got two of the usual suspects here. Uh, go ahead and give yourself a shout out, Fuzzy. Hey, what's up, everybody? Fuzzy Belvedere here. Uh, glad to be on, on podcast with Noof and my usual uh, suspects. Ready to talk some games. Looking forward right. to the show. Let's dive in, man. Let's dive in. And then the newest member of the shop podcast, the boy Zocker87. Go ahead and give yourself a shout out, sir. What's up, everybody? It's great to be here tonight. We have some awesome topics, great panel. And of course, we got no chills here, penis and everything. It's going to be great. <laughs> 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 no problem no problem at all and once again i am ptk blam the host with the most let's dive right in once again if this is your first time being here please hit that subscribe button drop a like on the podcast as well helps the podcast be seen uh, by you beautiful people out there watching in internet land so let's go dive right in fellas we got a whole lot to cover here today so i want to start off with a topic and i did a video about this earlier this week on the channel if you've not gotten Gotten a chance to see that. Go back in the archive. It was the very last video I put up. Um, and this is something that I've been kind of pondering. Uh, we're talking about Gamescom. We're coming off E3. We're hearing all of these different things about the next generation, you know, PS5 and you know, Nintendo, and it's a Scarlet situation. So I'm really got me, got my juices flowing, got me thinking about the next generation. And how important do you guys think the next generation is for Xbox? So I'm going to start with you, Nukem, on that. Noof, let me know how important do you think the next generation is considering how this one kind of started for Xbox. Well, the start is everything, and that's the telltale for Xbox. I mean, traditionally speaking, if you don't start out hot, you generally don't finish hot. I mean, it's it, the industry. Ha we've seen a lot of trends, but, you know, generally, with the exception of, like, the Super Nintendo started slower than Genesis, and that picked up, uh, you know, but generally, it's, you know, it's where you start. It's the impression that you make on gamers, and sometimes, as they say, it's, uh, it's a little too late to make a second impression for some people, and I think at uh, the first impression, impression that xbox left on people way back in 2013 i know it seems like a decade ago uh that still lingers today it left a bad taste in people's mouths xbox has spent the better part of this gen trying to catch up and uh, do right by its gamers i think they've come a long long ways uh people may disagree but i think they certainly have they've certainly made uh, a lot of big changes and i think the start of next gen is huge for xbox they got to get off to a great start and the only way they can do it is have the hardware right which i i'm pretty sure that's the one part they are going to have nailed down and the second part is going to be the price and if they are going to come up with multiple SKUs, that could fix that dilemma plus the all access which i'm sure we'll talk about a little later on in the show could be a big factor moving forward and last but not least and i think this one is going to do well is have a solid lineup of games when they launch they need to have heavy hitters not just franchises that we know and love but they need to have a new ip that sets the world on fire it's been a long time since microsoft dropped an ip that not only is critically acclaimed but seems to do well from a sales standpoint that is critical and i think they've got the studios lined up to get that done so the start is huge for xbox if they start out stuttering and and playstation gets a jump on them it could be a long uh a long console feud for them in the future yeah definitely and i i agree with that 100 percent. i think the, the biggest thing like you said was that the, the fact that Sony has been able to completely control the narrative throughout the generation by getting off to the start. Now, Sony did what it was supposed to do. Microsoft tripped up. They capitalized along the way, and they pretty much took 
the ball and ran with it from that point. So I think that Microsoft, and I've always said this, that they play checkers, not checkers. They play chess, not checkers, essentially. And I feel like that's once Phil got his feet set, essentially, and, you know, this last like two or three years or so, and that guy who was above them, what was his name again? The um, His oh, boss at one point, Myers, they, they kicked his ass out of there. He was holding the purse strings, essentially, to the bags. He wasn't trying to pay no pay nobody to get no no money or anything like that out to, to buy, buy new studios and do some of the things they've done recently. I think once that happened, the floodgates have opened. And I think Phil, like you said, there's a couple things that I know for sure. They're not going to fall behind on power. That's never going to happen again. I'm, I'm sure of that from Phil. Um, not like I talked to him, but just I feel like that's how he, he feels. Essentially, We're not doing that again on top of the fact that they're going to have the studios lined up to come out with these great IPs. So I'm going to throw that over to you too, Fuzzy. What do you think? How important is this next generation for Xbox? Oh, it's, it's definitely important. It's one of those things where I think they started even before they uh, reworked the uh, the Xbox One S and X, uh, and making the X. They're, they're already preparing. They already got the uh, the Game Pass set up where they're going to really push that with the next generation and have that as a, a, a nice startup for anybody that didn't go with Xbox the previous generation. So they'll have a nice catalog to start off with along with the exclusive that will probably launch with it. But I... I I can tell by the fact that they, all the studios that they just acquired, there is not just the financial backing, but the energy behind them to get everything going for this next generation. Like they're they're going to come out the gate swinging with the with this next gen. How do you think that um that skewed the, the I mean we're going to talk about this in great detail a little bit later, but you think that the multiple different skews, you think that the streaming situation as far as the, the Scarlet, you think that's going to play a big role in in the, the kind of their resurgence this next generation? I think so. It's it's going to be a nice entry point as far as price wise for a lot of those that didn't pick up an Xbox previous generation, or for those that are kind of on the fence. Maybe they're into just mobile gaming, or maybe they are primarily a PC gamer but want something that's kind of a little bit less expensive as a side hobby type of thing. Even though it's not portable, but it's a lot more portable. You know, to take that on a trip to wherever you're going to be stationed or a hotel or something like that, as opposed to bringing your, your desktop and stuff. So that streaming, that streaming skew, I think is going to be a nice add in to bring in more, you know, more butts into the seats type of thing for Xbox. So it's, they're, they're definitely looking to get to that 2 billion, you know, gamers out there. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. definitely. That's how Apple managed to get so many iPhones out there is by having a plan. And uh, how many people do we hear even today that say the only reason they don't have an Xbox One X isn't because they wouldn't love one. It's because they've had trouble affording one, especially if you've already got an Xbox or you find it hard to buy games. Uh, yeah, five, four, you know, four or five hundred dollar console, six hundred dollar in Canada. That uh, that shit's a lot to drop for, say, like the average person, especially if you're like on minimum wage or you got kids and and you're struggling to bring in an income. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's that covers a lot of that market. You know, we're going to dive in a little bit later because I got a whole lot of points to make in that regard. But I think that's a big one. Luke. And I think that they didn't do that at all. This iteration, you know, they had a lot of ideas about what they wanted to do. They got a little bit caught with their pants down as far as a 500 versus 400 dollar thing. We all know kind of how Sony flip flopped a little bit and said, oh, we'll take that fucking camera out the box. We need to be a little bit lower. So at the last second, uh-huh. so they kind of got caught with their pants down a little bit. But I don't think that happens. I think that alleviates, you know, having a different skews. It alleviates that happening again this time around. You know, less chance of getting hit, you know, blindsided. Well, it's not. It's not new. I don't know if you guys remember. Remember on the 360 there for a while that uh, Microsoft had that plan where I think it was you bought so much live or whatever, then you got the console for like like 120, but you had to subscribe for like a year or some shit like that. Yeah, I remember. That was yeah, so I remember. Like, oh, wow. like, that was a couple of years. years ago. Yeah, that was a yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they're basically born from the same idea, but obviously a modified. But, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that stuff more later, I'm sure. Oh, for sure, for sure. So it's on you, Zucker, man. What do you think? Do you think this is the one of the most critical generations thus far for Xbox as a brand? How important do you think this is, this next generation? Um, I'll be honest. I don't even think it is a generation. I think generations are dead. I think that okay. Xbox sees them as dead. And what we're going to talk about later with the plan and all that, I think indicates that when you look at, um, it's like you look, you got to look at phones, right? There's no generations in phone. It's just, yeah. you have about three or four sort of iterations of a phone that people use. And then finally it gets to the point where you can't use it anymore. Cause it's slow. That's kind of where we're going. And the number one thing that I think Xbox is trying to do or Microsoft is make it where it's not generations anymore, where it's like the 360 and the PS3 going head to head, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One going head to head for 
five, six years, we're not going to be seeing that anymore. That, that, that whole era of gaming is dead. It's gone. The big thing oh. that matters, the big thing that matters is what software services and everything you're going to have on there that differentiates you from the other company. So it's extremely important for Microsoft to really knock out games out of the park, right? And getting these, that's that's the number one thing when, you know, this last generation that we had or the one that we're currently in is that people, especially Xbox, hasn't had a new franchise that blew up. Yeah. Rise, Son of Rome, Sunset Overdrive, Quantum Break, you know, they kind of failed. And the only one that really stuck around and people hate, but it sold extremely well was Sea of Thieves. That's the only game that really they kind of are like, wow, like this is the only like that's the only big game we got this generation. I said for Xbox. that. I I I low key said that a few long long few videos ago uh, on my channel. I did mention I think Sea of Thieves would have a lot more legs than a lot of people originally thought it would. Well, yeah, and 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 with the updates and everything, like it's a great like you know I, I've loved it. You know everybody knows I like the game, but that's not the point. The point is that yeah. they've only had one big game this generation that really elevated them to be like you know what some people did buy a system for this game now yeah. and so next gen not next generation but later in the next couple of years you know the initiative ninja theory compulsion games even um playground games they're all working on to me i think new franchises mm -hmm. and so we're not only are we going to get the halo the gears and the fours are the ones that we love and maybe a couple other recognizable ones but we're going to get new franchises and that's what xbox has been missing for about five years now is that new yeah. franchise to bring in a new audience and that's the number yeah, one definitely. thing they need to, that's the number one thing they need to hit on so then they can compete with everybody else right because that's what nintendo sells on like they sell crazy because of their exclusives and so does sony to be honest and that's yeah. the, that's the last part that Xbox is missing is that one last part to differentiate them like where it's to me not even a contest of which is better, and that's the difference. And do you, well, they need a critically acclaimed game. Be, this concept, right? and do you think new. it has to be a new franchise? You guys think I, it has to be a brand new franchise? I, I think it does. I think they need different types of games. I know they have the third person shooter down with Gears. They have the first person shooter down with Halo. They got the racer down with Forza. And then after that, they need like story adventure, maybe something new that we don't even know that like some visionary creator makes just something different, right? And a new yeah. character to love. We love Master yeah. Chief. We love, you know, Phoenix. Like we love all these characters. Like we need another character. Like look at my picture, right? It's Gears of War. Yeah. I love those characters, <laughs> right? We need something like that where people are like, man, I love that character. Like Halo's being made into a show. Like, come on, people. Yeah. Like, we need yeah. that type of character where people are invested in it and love it. Like Uncharted, people love them. People love people in yeah. Last of Us. You know, Spider-Man and, and God of War, Kratos. Like, I love Kratos. Like, every like that these are characters that, that keep going for years and decades where people can just keep going back but to that well. But let me just say something in return to those games, right? You know, Sea of Thieves was not a critically massive hockey. I wouldn't say it was poorly received, but it didn't exactly skyrocket with nines and tens. Like Quantum Break, perfect example. To me, Quantum Break was a really well done game. I think the game is phenomenal. People may disagree with me, but I thought it looked fantastic. I thought it played cool. I thought it had a cool storyline. For all intents and purposes, I thought Quantum Break should have been as big a hit as they put it out to be. Uh, you know, but for some reason, it didn't so at the end of the day too the xbox community has got to step up and get behind these ips um you know at the end of the day that's that's the bottom line you put your money yeah. where your mouth is because so many people talked up a storm about quantum break prior to coming out and then for whatever reason everybody fell it's off fine. the bandwagon and, and started going along with the whole uh you know the youtuber agenda the media trashing what because it didn't hit 1080p i mean really what else was there and don't give me the fact oh well it had all of those tv shows shows because fucking half the playstation games got half hour cutscenes. <laughs> well i would say i would say to be honest with you with quantum break is i played the game i beat the game i enjoyed the game for to some extent but to me it wasn't a uh, set the world on fire like we're looking at actors that we've seen play in the x-men or you know little finger from game of thrones we're not looking at characters that we could get invested in that to me was the, that's to me is the difference like kratos didn't come from a tv show Right, we need characters that are created within gaming. But That's I think, the difference to me. And I, Quantum Break's gameplay was a little like Remedy. I think they're a little overrated. I think their gameplay 
was very clunky. It wasn't the graphics or the 1080 or whatever the hell, 900p, 720, whatever the hell it was. It wasn't that. It was just the gameplay to me was extremely clunky. And then the movie show part, I actually enjoyed the movie. I like looked forward to watching that because it was like, damn, I'm getting like a whole show for just this game that I'm playing. Like, that's kind of cool. But yeah. at the same time, I, I felt like the game suffered mechanically. Okay. Well, I mean, that's, that's a, I guess you can kind of go head by head. And, you know, that, that's something that some people think, some people do not think. But I, I agree to a point. I mean, there are, I don't know, it's, it's tough. And I agree with Noof 100% because that's the biggest thing. You know, we got to put our money where our mouth is. And this is what, this is the issue I had when after, after Sunset Overdrive, after Rise, after Quantum Break, that, you know, we talked about we want these kind of experiences on this particular platform. But we don't we don't support it like we want it. So what's the incentive to do it again for Xbox or for Phil or why? You know what I'm saying? What's the, what's the incentive to do that? So I think that's why we saw that huge low kind of in the middle of the generation or whatever you want to call it, that generation, um, where we weren't getting very much. And everybody was you know kind of jumping off the bandwagon. Everybody had their pitchforks and where are the games at? And oh, my God, what's going on? But it's just that we didn't really support the games when they came out. I mean, I have every single one of the games you mentioned. I mean, eventually later on, a lot of them became free, like Rise was free, Sunset Overdrive was free at some point. Um, but when the games came out, these games had an opportunity. I think Sunset Overdrive was a fantastic game. It could have been something, you know, just to add to the to to the um, to the, uh, the portfolio. But it didn't really do well enough, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, to be something. So I think that's going to be the biggest thing going forward. And I think it was just I too out there. I think it, it was a little out there. Like to me, the game that I think believe deserves a sequel out of every new franchise uh, is is Rise: Son of Rome. That's Rise, a game. I, yeah. That's the game that I, <laughs> I I I legitimately skipped on because I was like, wow, people are really hating this game. And I saw the preview. I was like, man, that game looks awesome. And then I just like didn't play it because everybody was hating on it. I was like, ah, maybe I'll wait. And then I played it. I got it. I don't know for pretty cheap. And I was like, wow, like this is like amazing. Yeah, it was. A and, 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 and again, and like at the end where, you know, spoiler, even if you haven't played, it's been four years, whatever, like where he's getting stabbed and you're going down the hall, like he continuously fighting like, dude, that's a character building moment to me. I was like, yeah. dude, I want to keep seeing this guy later on. Yeah, it could have been something. It, I mean, that was that was kind of uh, um, who the hell did the studio? Oh, God. Who's the Cry studio? Deck. Cry Deck. Yeah, that, Cry that, Deck. Uh, part of that had to do with them as well. You know, they, they I think well, didn't they get bought out or they closed. I can't remember. One no, of they, 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 they got just close to closing. Down. They, they oh. took they, they, they eliminated a lot of their workforce, but they're oh, okay. they're still kind of around. Yeah. OK. That new cool, game, cool. Uh, the hunted, uh, the hunted that they showed off. off. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cry Tech. That's Cry Tech. Yep. True. Good point. Good point. So that was a good opening. That was a good opening topic, everybody. Uh, we knocked that one out the ballpark once again. If this is your first time watching the podcast, click that subscribe button, man. We're going to keep this fucking train moving, man. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. Now we <laughs> so we kind of touched on this, and we're going to elaborate on this point. So I wanted to let you guys or talk to you guys about uh, the all-inclusive, the game pass, the two-year, the financing. And, you know, we that's kind of been going around. It's kind of the, the buzz around the Xbox community. Are they going to be doing this? I mean, we haven't seen it implemented, but we've seen you know, numbers and they've showed the financing like graph or whatever the case may be. I've seen a couple of screenshots of what it would look like, but what kind of impact do you guys think this is going to have moving forward? It's going to be something that eventually it's, you know, it's going to be a staple. Um, I, I just, just to get my point out of the way, um, I just think it's an option. I, I see, I understand people being upset about it, but God damn it. It's like you go on to the, to the, the car lot. I mean, I, you may want the leather seats. I don't want the leather seats. I want the airbags. You know what I'm saying? Like you can still go buy, your console the same way you buy it if you just got three four hundred dollars to, to purchase it so i don't see the the big uproar about it but i can i guess i can understand from the other points so we're gonna start with you again new what do you think about this whole subscription and you know the different price points well i don't understand is how anybody could be upset about more options options are good aren't they and the more ways that you can give a person a chance to own an xbox and play Xbox games is a damn good thing. I don't, at the end of the day, nobody cares how you get the fucking system. They just care that you're playing games on it. And you know what? You get rid of those, uh, like I said, those barriers. Every time you bring something down for a person, no matter what the income, where they're from, where the demographic is, you're removing the barriers for entry. And this is the thing. Like I'm telling you guys, probably in five to 10 years, 10 years, maybe uh, Xbox games are going to be playable out of your smart TV. I'm telling you it's coming. Um, 
you know, that this is where the future is going, like it or lump it. Uh, but, you know, I think it's a very bold statement. It's a very brave move for Xbox. And I think overall it's going to pay off. It's really going to pay off to you for a lot of uh, uh, money strapped parents come Christmas time when they're trying to pick up a console for their kids and their kid wants one. But hey, maybe they got four kids in their household and you can't afford to go out and buy everybody a three or $400 item. You know how that goes, right? If you got kids. Yeah. So, hey, this yeah. makes it totally easy. Now you can find finance the damn thing you know and you can get some games with it you got game pass in there holy hell you got a fucking full collection ready to roll like kids are going to be happier than pings and shit it is uh, <laughs> fantastic indeed uh, i mean really don't know how you can go wrong with it I, I get it where some people are coming from and some people are there's even people out there to say well if you can't afford a console maybe you should stop uh, being a gamer and all that kind of oh, crap but, kind of shit is that? what kind of advice is that <laughs> i don't know man it's just I, I think it's a cool thing what they're doing like i said it's not something that i would use i mean i if i want the console i'm gonna buy it i'm gonna drop it day one or i'm gonna use a credit card and get it which is practically the same thing but either which way you know what i mean yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, it's, like I said before, I saw somebody earlier. Dude, uh, you're probably gonna laugh about this. That was bringing up. Well, you can, you know, Best Buy they got financing and did it. Well, come on, like, come on, like, stop being, stop nitpicking. Like, it's really not that serious. It's just another option. Like, I just, I don't get the slander. Like, I don't, I don't understand the saying. Like, you know, I don't like no. to necessarily bring the drama to the show, but to me, it's just another option. You can still buy your console the way you've always purchased it. Is they're not wish, taking away that option. I just wish when I was younger, I could have had an option like this for hookers. Hey, can I give you a down payment and pay you out later? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been great. would have got laid out more often. <laughs> <laughs> cash, or, cash or credit, noob. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's always cash. Always, always cash. Good plastic. Always right. cash. You can't pay for that plastic digital plastic, trail, man. Oh, yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> all right. It's all you, Fuzzy, man. What do you think about this financing option, man? You on board? Oh, forward? man. I'm, I'm gonna try not to take up too much time. I'm I'm a big fan of it. I wouldn't necessarily need to use it, but here's the thing: if the numbers are accurate, it's actually saving you money. So for me, what I would do is just go to the bank and say, "Hey, do you have free checking if I, you know, open up another account?" So if I already have an account with that bank, let's say it's eight hundred and you know eighty dollars to buy everything outright for two years, but with this plan, it's eight hundred and forty dollars. So I'm saving forty bucks. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take. 800 and some odd dollars out of my account, open up this new account and make it so it makes the payments for me. So I don't even have to think about it. It's like I already paid the 800 and some odd dollars up front, but I'm saving $40 on top of it. So it's 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 a no brainer in this in comparison to financing through a, a credit card or going through Best Buy or anything like that. I mean, it, it, it makes more sense to do it this way than it does to buy it up front. But you could just, like I said, start a, sec a separate checking account. All the money is drawn from that account. You save the extra 40 bucks, 40 more dollars in your pocket than what you would do if you just bought it outright. So it, it, it's a win-win. And then on the flip side of things, I have two boys. They, they don't have their own TV just yet. They're sharing an Xbox. We have a third Xbox, but because of how the way um, you know Game Pass and, and Live works, you can only game share between two systems. Now they can take their allowance. They get like $18 every two weeks. They can take their allowance and get an X. So, and have their own Game Pass and have their own live account. So, for and they're 12. So, they're probably going to have a bigger allowance as they do more chores. But for even for them, they're like, you know what? I would do this. They're already telling me now. So, if that's the case and one of them wants to take that, the original Xbox that they have, they can go ahead and upgrade to an X now. Now, they're going to have to figure out how they're going to buy their own 4K TV, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> See, but, uh, point you know. point proven there. Look, Fuzzy's a parent. Fuzzy gets hey, it. It makes yeah. sense. It just makes sense, man. It makes sense. Zalker, it's on you, brother. Are you on board with this, or how do you feel about it? I actually think it's a wonderful idea, to be honest with you. Um, there's a lot of times where I know a lot of people that, you know, they're not like dying for money, but they're just kind of like, hey, I can't slap this much money down right now, right? Like, yeah. I just can't slap $400, even for PlayStation. Like, I know a couple of people that ha don't have one that they want one. They have Xboxes, but they want a PlayStation to play Spider-Man and all those games. And they're like, man, like, when I told them about this thing, they were like, wow, that's kind of badass. <laughs> like, they're even thinking about yeah. getting another Xbox to have, like, at their, like, so they can share with within their roommates and stuff like that. And it's, you know, like, honestly, just think about it. It's like, if the mouth is right, right? Like, they say $30, $35 an hour or a month whatever the hell it is. Yeah. It's like, you just don't go out to eat twice a month. Like literally just cook from home. Like, and you got it. Like you're done. Yeah. 
Like yes. there it is. You you're gonna have. They got my ramen now. noodles and an Xbox. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Honestly, yeah, that's, I mean, that's 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 more people spend on more people spend money on Starbucks in in three days than they do on that. You know what I'm on saying? the real. Like, and that's and that's the yeah. thing. Like it's just such. And then you get Game Pass and Live. Like it's just it just makes so much sense to do that. And it and it it, it is basically them going the phone route again, right? Like what yep. Apple does. Apple has this thing where you pay however much for the phone, like 40 bucks, 48 bucks a month for a year and a half or two years. And then you own the phone and that's it. And they do yep. a credit check to make sure you can do it. Like same thing. Like in two years, you're going to be sitting there going, cool. That was awesome. I own this now. And then maybe a year later, or even when you're done paying that, the new one's going to come out and you're like, cool, I'll just keep going. Like whatever, yeah. 35 bucks a month don't, yeah. don't matter. And that's it. Like, it's just such a great opportunity for them to get, xbox into hands that people might not be able to afford right away but they can afford 35 bucks a month and then they save yeah. 20 dollars overall right or 30 bucks yeah. overall and, and that's just and, such a great way to 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 bring people into gaming that wouldn't have the funds to and you just get so much access to so much shit you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. the game pass you get so much for that you know what i'm saying like it's it's you get access to so many games and you know a ton of it's not even that just, I mean, that's that's an icing on the cake is what I'm saying. You just yeah, get, you know, go ahead, go ahead. But, but for me, like for my Xbox, like I don't know about you guys, but I use this damn thing for freaking everything. Like I use it to watch Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, HBO, NFL. Like I use it for everything. Like literally every, it's my inner, it's the only entertainment thing I have. It's, it is the one, right? It's the Xbox one. It's an all in one yeah. entertainment system. Yeah. That's what I use it for. That's what these people are going to get from it. Not to mention 4k. Like if they have a 4k TV, like it's just, come on. Like if yeah. you're going to only pay 30, $35 and like, and we don't even know what the true numbers are, right? Like yeah. you don't know, like it might yeah. be, it might be smaller because Xbox doesn't really care how much you pay for the hardware. Cause they don't make money off of it. They pair, they care about what you're going to pay for the software. Mm, so when yeah. you buy a game, when you buy a movie, when you start using their system to buy they, other things, that's they where they're making you, their money. They just want you to get in the ecosystem. They yeah. want you in the that's ecosystem. Right. Exactly. Once you're in the ecosystem, you know, you can, there's all kind of shit. You can do apps and games and, you know, game pass. And all this can other you stuff imagine stuff. like the big billboard out there, man, during black Friday or whatever. And they're like PlayStation for $350. And then somebody else sitting there going, yeah, you want to walk away with an Xbox one X for 35 bucks right now. And we were going to be like, <laughs> what? Like, yeah, you get, and you get all these games and you just pay every month, 35 bucks. And there you go. You're done. And the guy's going to be like, uh, yeah, fuck. That's yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it, it's simple, man. You were again, you remove barriers, you get more players. More players generally means a better chance of making more money. It is simple, simple math. Fortnite is prime example. Fortnite was not setting the world of fire. Fortnite was this game that they couldn't sell for 40 or 50 Part bucks when it was on the shelf. As soon as they came out with that free uh, battle royale mode, guess yep. what happened? Boom. 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 It went skyrocket. PUBG was eating it alive for a while until they came up with that mode and then all of a sudden it's like wow so there you go you remove a barrier you get people in and you know what kids are doing yeah they got the battle royale for free but they're dropping coin on all of the uh the crap in the game and, and they're they're rolling in it and this is oh, this is it right and and this is not just good for xbox and microsoft's games but it's great for a lot of third-party devs who are having a hard time competing for shelf space uh against the big triple a stuff for the lesser known devs uh stuff like that this this is great for them. They get more exposure. They get more people playing. Uh, and that means, again, more DLC, more content from in-game sales. Yeah, well, and, yeah, definitely. and that's the, you know, when people buy consoles, like, what's the first thing you do? Like, when you get a console, you see them looking around. Like, you've seen these people at Target, wherever oh, yeah. you are. They're like, oh, okay, like, like what am I going to play on this damn thing? And you're, they're just kind of sitting there, like, trying to pick a game. It's like, that's what happens when, when you go to PlayStation or you go to Xbox right now. It's like you're trying to pick that one game that's going to last you a little while because you're dropping so much money right now. And, and, think and that's about like that. And Game Pass just eliminates that whole thing. Like, you're going to get, if you go buy a PlayStation, you're going to get Spider Man or God of War right now, or you're going to get an Xbox and you're going to get 200 games with you. Like, and just, think about what? that. Think about the incentive that is for a soccer mom. You know, think about the incentive that is for a dad who's like, shit, you know. All right, so I got the system. You know, I don't really have enough money to go buy, you know, three, four different brand new games. But I get him the system. He's gonna have access to, you know, two hundred goddamn games. Like, I think it'll be okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, think if it's if it comes down to, you know, standing in that aisle, like, man, what can I? Uh, what's what's what makes the most sense for me? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. a lot of parents are in that situation. Like, shit. Okay, well, I know kids right now. My next door neighbor, they have two Xboxes. 
they don't even have they have like three games between the two Xboxes, you know. But the the fact that they have Game Pass available, we we game together all the time on Game Pass, you know, just because they have that access to those games. And it's what ten bucks a month or whatever the case be. Right now, it's two dollars for two months. Right now, at, at this very yeah. point, so. Um, it's just, I think it's amazing, but I don't know how you could even spin it to be anything bad. I don't even know how. If you're you spinning it, 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 honestly, if you're spinning it, it's because you're jealous and you wish some, and you wish your platform had it, your platform of choice. And you're just trying to hate on people that are, that just want a game. Cause some people like when you spin it like that, man, you might actually be hurting someone's feelings or making them feel bad because not everybody's financially stable. And so some people that want a game and it's their passion, but they can't afford it. They're in a tough spot. Like this can be a way for them to get that passion back. And still yeah. be financially stable, true. Yeah. Right? Like that—that's that's the way I look at it. Like, don't get me wrong; I'm not one of those people, and I and I, you know, I don't know many people like that. I know a few, but this option will help people like get less stressed, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's—that's that's what gaming is, man. You get less stress with gaming, not add stupid pressure and like annoyances. I'll yeah. sum it up with a newfism for you. Hey, if you had a strip club, would you rather take the best hooker for fifty dollars for thirty minutes, or take the rest of them in the back for the whole month for a hundred? There you go. <laughs> 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 if, the be- if the best one is named Noof, you know which I'm paying for. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, one more thing I want to add to that. Yeah, go ahead. Just, just thinking of it, like thinking out of the box. Let's say I'm a PlayStation guy, not one that is necessarily some of the extremists that you might see on like Twitter or anything. But let's say I have a PlayStation now, and remember how we talked about Xbox trying to convince those in the digital age to come over to Xbox. This makes it easy because yeah. they already have their PlayStation. They already have the games that they want. But now instead of them having to chunk out that $800 and then have to worry about a PS5 coming around the corner, they can now slide in for 35 get the uh, the X1X, have all the games through Game Pass just to kind of like test the waters. And they're not out of a lot of money. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be, yeah, there'll probably be like a return penalty if they truly, truly hate the ecosystem. Yeah, all right. You just pay the penalty or whatever. But you now can have your second system for all of those that say they're gamers and they're all about games. It's like, hey, you can have that second system now for $35 more a month. It's not that bad of a deal. I mean, it, for some, it's, you know, one system is as, as far as it's going to go. But now there's no real excuse not to at least try that other system for those that are, you know, on the fence. Like, hey, I, I like Halo or, hey, I might like Forza. Well, now you get the chance to try it pretty much the whole catalog through you know game pass for you know pennies on the dollar in comparison so it, it it's it, it should help not necessarily convert playstation people over but it, it should definitely get more xboxes in what used to be only playstation household so no, i think the I, I don't think it'll convert playstation i think the only thing that'll convert playstation or get those people is a new exclusive or a game that like they yeah. just have to play yeah, yeah uh, true. Well, i mean but like he said before once again it just it it kind of it puts it on their head like you know what that may not be such a you know <laughs> you just you start to think about it a little bit more like that may not be such a bad idea even if yeah. you're one of those guys who's like eh, i don't really want to even i'm not even really I'm a big fan of it. i'm even thinking about doing it man because like yeah. why not like it's if you're saving <laughs> money over time like it's just dumb if you don't yeah. yeah yeah good point good point so that was a, that was the second topic we covered everybody so thanks for everybody rocking out with this man you guys have been awesome uh, by the way, once again, um, <laughs> Noof, you can go ahead and have that tag, that Roddy Dangerfield, man. Put it on a t-shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Not a problem. So we're going to go ahead and keep this train moving, man. It's feeling good today, man. Thanks for everybody watching here, too. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about, man, we're going to touch on Gamescom a little bit. I didn't really do a video about it because I just, I mean, I, I jumped on Twitter the day after, and I'm like, okay, what happened? You know, actually the day of. I was actually at work, and I was like, okay, what happened? I'm, I'm dying to see what happened. And every, there was some kind of, you know, up and down. Everybody was like, eh. And then I saw, you know, the the, the, the inside Xbox, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, it was pretty cool. So I want you guys' opinion. I know people probably beat this to death a few times already, but I haven't really got to hear anybody's opinion. So we're going to start with you, Zalker, about, um, you know, Gamescom, essentially. You know, what did you feel about it? You know, you okay with everything? Or how do you feel about how Gamescom? Dude, to be honest, I actually enjoyed the show. A lot of people like are just like, oh, it's trash, it's trash, and it's like, did you watch it? They're like, no, and I'm like, all right, well then, <laughs> then what the hell is wrong with you? Like, how you like? I didn't think it was bad. I honestly didn't. I thought I didn't go in there expecting huge expectations and like uh-huh. all these announcements. The only thing I really did expect was a uh, Elite Controller Two announcement, which uh-huh. didn't happen, but it's fine. Um, I feel like they could have made it a little shorter, like cut out that PUBG developer thing that they had with that visit, and then the Halo 
um, what you call it, David Buster's game. Like, cut yeah. that out. Like, yeah. you could have cut that out, made it about an hour and 15 to like an hour and 30, and it would have been pretty good. But they showed a lot of gameplay. Like, Metro Exodus, that gameplay, the new gameplay looked really good. Devil May Cry 5 looked pretty decent, and I'm not even looking forward to that game. Um, just a lot of things. They showed a lot of games. You know, at least they had a show, to be honest. They came yeah. and showed up a little bit and gave us little hints of stuff that's coming. And, and like, you know, the um, Master Chief Collection, I thought that was awesome. I thought the new, the new 4K update and then Game Pass on September 1st, like, just hell yeah so so yeah. i'm looking forward to that like you know the 4k update with that um so yeah i didn't i didn't think it was as bad as people were like hate making it out to be like i was just kind of like shocked that people were just so it's down the expectations. on it it's, it's you know people it's people's expectations. because i mean we even talked about it prior too. you know and i i wasn't necessarily uh you know ex expecting anything to happen but once again we do these shows we talk we give our opinions on things that we'd like to see ultimately you know what i'm saying so i think a lot of people they, they it slaps them in the face when things don't happen that they want to happen and they, they have a well, hard they time hype it up they hype it up yeah. there's there's a lot so, of hype going on and people are like oh yeah. games come games come and they think it's 2014 and 15 when they had conferences yeah, yeah. And it's just not that's just not that's just not what's going to happen this yeah. is way too close to e3 for anything to be realistically announced from any developer because yeah. e3 they show their guns and then they go back into hibernation for a year or to six, seven, eight months before they're ready to show anything else. Yeah. So Gamescom is really way more suited for people in Europe that, and then the foot traffickers that are there, like the world media is not covering it like crazy. So yeah. it's not, and that's why I just, you know, I enjoyed the show. I watched the whole thing. Did I feel like it lagged at some points? Of course. Yeah. I mean, every show lags at one point, but to just say it was complete trash and throw it out the window and like, Oh, they shouldn't do this. I was just like, come on, like just, just relax a little. They had some good information. They had some cool stuff shown, and that's all you need to go there for. You're not going there for E3 announcements. You're going yeah. there just to see what's up for a little bit. If anything, this just confirms that E3 is the E3 is a Super Bowl. E3 is the show where you're going to get those big announcements for the most part. Like you said, this is not 2014, 2015. If Phil's not going, you're probably not going to see anything. No, crazy. and I think I think um, you know, so, and I do think Xbox suffers in that a little bit. That's you, this is specifically for Xbox, right? What I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, I really do think that they need to show something at E3 and then show something in December. So basically, after that the holidays, like show like what's their own show, this, like a kind like, of like, like their own show every six months. Give us something because waiting a year, like we saw how bad it was last year from last E3 to this E3. A lot of people were on doom and gloom and basically <laughs> like, like like their Xboxes were on suicide watch, mm -hmm. and it was just you know it was really bad. And once E3 happened, everybody was like, "Holy shit!" Like, never mind, I'm good. Right. Yeah. But the yeah. temper that bad press have one every six months. Show a little bit more of a game that might be coming out, you know. And that's something that disappointed me. Crackdown wasn't shown, but I didn't. I'm not disappointed because I didn't. I mean, I'm disappointed they didn't show it, but I knew it wasn't going to be shown. Yeah. Because of, I think that's the last kind of quote unquote mediocre game that's going to be scored from Xbox for a while. Uh -huh. And I think they're just trying to push that one out. To be honest. Okay, cool. So uh, we're going to throw it to you, Noof, man. What do you think? What was your uh, expectations compared to what you actually saw at uh, Gamescom? Well, it pretty much met my expectations. Look, comparing this year's Gamescom to last year's Gamescom is like comparing uh, Halloween to Christmas. There is no comparison. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, this one was good. But like, look, E3 this year, everybody knows Xbox came out swinging. They fired the big guns at E3. So really, what else did you expect? Really, the only two things I, I, I would have hoped or maybe even got thrown a bone on, and I think somebody stated that we wouldn't see it anyway before Gamescom was maybe, maybe something to relate it to fable maybe something related to possibly crackdown uh, because that game is not that far away and uh we seem to be very you know uh left in the dark as to where that game really is and what's happening with it they I, i've heard people say that crackdown is basically done they're putting the finishing touches on it but uh it seems kind of weird if you're that close to finished and you're not showing anything I, like when are you going to show it is the big question i mean outside of that though there was very little surprises i i called one thing a weeks before on advance and i got this right i said i expect lots of bundles and uh sure enough they delivered there was lots of xbox bundles that was also one of the talking points that i heard people were disappointed on was that yeah, not a well, custom yeah, consoles yeah lots of bundles but nothing custom there's that one that's got that bit of a it, it's like a knockoff of the scorpio edition except it's like got a gold dust on it and it kind of goes from black to gold i forget which one that's bundled with i don't know if it's the forza or what what bundle is that? What bundle or the battlefield, wasn't it? 
It was either Battlefield or Fallout. I can't remember. Battlefield, I think. Pretty sure it's not the okay. Fallout ones. Yeah, I think it's the Battle. So, like, that was a little disappointing. You know, you know, you can complain all you want about Sony and and their lackluster efforts or customs, but at least they're doing them. Uh, whereas Xbox right now is like doing nothing with it. Uh, you know, got hella controllers though. <laughs> and we got another controller it wasn't an elite but yeah we got that uh the PUBG one which actually kind of looked kind of cool um but yeah like you know it was it was a good show if just sort of not overwhelming but i wasn't expecting i i said to people you got to temper your expectations because microsoft killed it at e3 what else were they going to show unless they were going to show us a little bit of something new uh, and maybe like i said they, they want to make sure they keep the momentum rolling in the next year's e3 and phil doesn't want to show stuff again that's too early get overzealous and then we got fans either bitching them out because the game is too far out or bitching at them because we shoot you know it, it, you know you, you know what i mean right you're damned if you do damned if you don't so i thought it was a pretty decent show overall uh and and they kept the pacing pretty good you know what i mean it wasn't dragged out they did have some developer talk but they didn't overdo it too bad so that was okay cool all right yeah and i funny thing about it is that i i started to watch it then well, i got about halfway through it then i started over like I, I had to go and leave and do something i started over I'm like you know what after watching it you know a second time through i'm like it's not too bad you know the, the, expe the expectations and some of the news that we got i was like, okay this is pretty cool just feel it to kind of get us through kind of tighten up, you know, a couple of things that we've already talked about, some things we've already seen, a couple little bits of new gameplay, some bundles, not, not a bad show, you know, just kind of get people ready for the holidays saying, hey, this is what we're going to be doing over the next you know, three or four months. So I didn't think it was all that bad. So Fuzz, Fuzzy, what about you, man? Versus your expectations, how do you feel about it? Uh, well, my expectations, I probably went a little overboard looking for it to be announced. <laughs> and stuff, but yeah, the, I, I was no, looking no, at that too. No, no big deal that they didn't announce that. Hey, they already announced five at, at E3, so it's not like I'm hurting or anything like that. Yeah. The, the only thing that, like in, in Zocker, and I think even Newf mentioned this, uh, was the Elite 2. That, that Just because the rubber grips are now coming off, off of my third one, that I was like, come on, just show the thing. I know it's not coming out until October or whatever. I'm, I plan on buying. I just want to at least see it and then maybe, you know, let me know that it's going to be in like design lab. So I, that way I can get exactly what I want, how I want, and then have that thing on order and just know that it'll be, you know, shipped to my door in October. But, uh, you know, the Elite 2 not being there, a little disappointed. Not the end of the world because I know it's coming at some point. I mean, obviously they're probably, you know, you know bug, well, not bug testing, but like, putting it through its paces to make sure that they don't have an issue like some people are having now with the rubber grips and things like that. But, uh, you know, not showing crackdown, eh. was hoping they would show at least something, but the fact that it's going to be in game pass come February, I'm still getting it. I, between that and Anthem and, uh, what, what's the other two? Um, what, uh, he's, well, there's days gone Anthem, uh, Crackdown right three and oh, Metro. No, you, sorry, no, Metro. Metro. Metro all sorry, on sorry. that same that within that same week or whatever. Oh yeah, uh, you got two of them. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so those I already have pre-ordered and stuff like that. So it would be nice to see at least something or some sort of update. But other than that, I wasn't really looking forward to Devil May Cry. But after seeing some of the gameplay and the destructibility, as far as you know, throwing characters through churches and whatnot, that looked like it was pretty cool and. Um, you know, a lot of the other additional gameplay I was hoping for a little bit more info on the division two, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that will be something that Ubisoft does closer to the end of the year because the, the game doesn't come out until March, but, uh, yeah, Heck, that wasn't just was Devil great. May Cry. That was making a lot of grown men cry after that. <laughs> well, that <laughs> shit was legit. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to Devil May Cry. I, I, I was one of the few that actually really liked the last one. I know people didn't like, you know, the way he looked, they thought it was emo, the whole situation, but I mean, I just, <laughs> I, I actually liked the game. I, I didn't mind it. You know, I, 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 I thought the game looked good, but I, I can't get behind that kind of style of game. And then the music, <laughs> like the music is just like totally like irritates me. But, you know, one <laughs> of the things that I, I didn't bring up and that um, Noof did was the custom consoles. I don't yeah. see the big deal. Like, I mean, I understand like it sucks. They don't have them for certain people, but I already own an X. And I think everybody else that I've talked to owns an X. Like, what does it like? It doesn't really matter unless you're just talking about, oh, it's a collecting, sale. Collecting. Yeah, col I mean, maybe collecting, but yeah. like, man, I just like, I just was just like, I could care less. Yeah, that's a, but, that's a like, small. Like, I've, never owned, I've never owned a custom console in my life. Yeah, that's a, that's a small vocal minor. I, I understand, you know, and you gotta, you gotta realize where the banter is coming from. 
we're on our small little corner of Twitter, and all of us are kind of in the know, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of the guys that are kind of, I want to say complaining, but just kind of frustrated with the fact that there was, you know, the lack of custom consoles are, are guys that are collectors or guys that, you know, do yeah. those types of things. So it's a small vocal minority. So it, it just seems like it's a whole bunch of people complaining. But in the grand scheme of things, it's a few people kind of upset with it. But it's really not that big of a deal. I just so, wish they would do like a design lab thing of consoles. Not that I'm looking to, you know, trade in my X for another X, but it'd be kind of cool if I could get, you know, either like a clear box or something like that. Not that this is like a custom PC type of deal, like where's a PC case, but you know, a custom console through design labs wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, they're doing well with the, the controllers. I'm pretty sure well, they could you know, move a couple of those in place too. The crazy thing is you see Microsoft running these promotions, like whether it's movies and different things, and they put those, you know, those ones that you can win, and they're like, they're killing it. They're oh, so yeah, amazing yeah. designs. Yeah. <laughs> the Deadpool one, the Black Panther one, there was, yeah. I don't know, like there was, else, and you're like, how come you can't do that for like one of your games? Like they're amazing, and, and you're missing out on so much money, because a lot of guys who already own an Xbox are dying to get their hands on a new one. Like, I just don't understand how they're passing up uh, the chance that like sort of drive your brand and maybe it's because at this point they don't care maybe they just want to they just want to sell a bunch of xbox uh the the one s like they're trying to do some clearance and get some of the regular ones out so they just bundle it with games instead i mean overall it does cost money to make a custom you gotta you gotta re-switch your semi line you gotta plan in advance you just can't do it overnight and say well tomorrow the semi line is gonna put red dye in the console we're gonna make this thing red but blue buttons on it i mean it has to be months in advance it's got to be tied in with stuff i kind of get it and uh, like fuzzy said i why that why they're and I'm probably they're working on it i wouldn't be surprised if they don't have it coming up for the next xbox but yeah custom lids uh you know even where you could just take out like a couple of pop screws on the top and you take the top lid off and then you put on whatever you want you know you go yeah. up and buy your favorite nfl team or nhl team or whatever and and everybody can do a custom like remember, said, remember face plates that yeah, was pretty cool for a while. Or like he mm -hmm. said, just just integrated that into Design Lab somehow. Now, I mean, yeah. obviously, if you do that, you got to pay for the license and things like the NFL, NBA. If you're trying to do something like that, you know, the, you have to pay for that. But I don't know what that's going to look like. But I think that'd be a cool you know, thing to do for Design Lab. You know, I've always said I think they should elaborate on that. You know, make, let you be able to add logos and things like that. You know, um, but I think the one drawback about like giving people the ability to just kind of do crazy stuff in design lab is that you can't really control what people, you know, make, you know what I'm saying? We've seen it with like call of duty logos. Like as soon as they gave people the ability to make their own fucking logo, all kind of dicks and grass everywhere. <laughs> it's crazy. All over the place. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. just, but I get it though. I think it's a good option. I think that's something that over time, it just makes sense to integrate into design lab. Hey, if you like your, you know, your favorite team is God, you know, whoever the, the Patriots, you get a Patriots logo and you pay a little extra money, 50 bucks or however much it costs, you know, to actually produce it um, or something like that. I think it would be just a cool option. I think that's something that as time goes by, they're just naturally going to do, um, you know, when it makes sense. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and my and just essentially to wrap up the topic, my thoughts on Gamescom, as I said before, um, I was pretty hyped. I'm, I'm being fuzzy on the same you know, essentially wave here. I, I had a, a lot of expectations as well. Um, I wasn't overboard with them. I, I was completely happy with what they did show. Uh, I would have liked something, you know, some type of announcement, you know, some type of, you know, small little trailer for Fable. That was kind of my pie in the sky situation. Um, maybe something about Obsidian, but, you know, with the fact that we didn't get those, I wasn't, you know, crying in bed, you know, or anything like that. It wasn't a really big of a deal. So I like what we got after watching the show a couple of times. It, it, it was pretty good and I was happy with it. So um, moving forward uh, to one of the last topics we have, we got two more things to talk about, guys, that we can fit them in. Um, this is fun. Uh, and I always like to throw in something a little different. We all talk about the same news. There's like 12 different Xbox shows every day of the week. We all talk about the same shit for the most part. So I like to throw in a lot of wrinkles in my show. So one of the things I wanted to uh, talk about, and this is for you too, everybody out there watching, um, you guys can answer this as well. So if you could steal one franchise away from Sony, Nintendo, or PC, what franchise would it be and why would you be? Able, why would you steal that away? So I'm going to start with you, Zalker, because I feel like you're going to have some shit. <laughs> I feel like you have some really cool to say. So what franchise would you steal away, man? Um... I'll start off with Nintendo, the number one franchise for me on Nintendo. I'm going to do all three, just so you know, because okay. I'm greedy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nintendo, I, I I really, like, the only franchise I really like on Nintendo is Smash Brothers. 
And okay. I just and that's the number one franchise I would love to have on Xbox. Um, I just think it's great. It's fun multiplayer. Play with your buddies. I used to play on the N sixty four with my buddies till the sun came up, and our parents like came down and just beat the hell out of us for staying up so late. It was great times. Um, but and then for uh, Sony, that's a hard one. But I probably am going to go with God of War because I love the God damn it, Zucker. God damn it, you still, <laughs> I, I, dude. I, I, the Greek mythology, like when that game first came out, I was like, oh my god, like I'm a Greek dude. So it's like I'm like ah, oh, like this is so amazing. And then you know now they went to Norse mythology, which I thought was just great. Like I just love that franchise. Um, yeah, it's probably my favorite franchise in that you know on there. Um, for PC. I'm gonna have to go with two games. It's either gonna be StarCraft or Counter Strike. Uh, yeah, Counter Strike Global Offense, CS:GO, because I think okay. they're very competitive, and I love competitive games. Will it need keyboard and mouse support? Of course, but if those games went on Xbox, just get over it. Like it's over. Like I just, I think those two games are just fantastic, and they're some of my favorite of all time. Nice. Okay. Cool. Cool. And uh, so you, knew I'm, I'm dying to see what you got to say, brother. What what franchise would you steal away, man? Uh, from any one in just yeah. one in particular, or from the you, Nintendo, you can do it like Zocker. You can pick one of each, or just yeah. one, whatever you want to do. Well, if I had to go with Nintendo, I'm gonna have to go with the Legend of Zelda franchise, hands down. Um, God damn it, you stole that one for me. <laughs> <laughs> from uh, from the PlayStation, it's gonna be the Uncharted series because as much as I love Kratos, there's just something that I love about Uncharted: the wittiness of Nathan Drake's character, the fact that it bears a lot of things that I like uh, it, with with like with Tomb Raider as well. They have a similarity to the franchise, but I I mean, the biggest reason I I bought playstation over the last few years was more or less for uncharted uh, i love that franchise i uh, love those characters so that would be cool um and i guess that's that's really about it i don't know what else yeah yeah sure okay all right and uh you fuzzy man what would you steal brother this this is a tough one for me because i i there's a few older games that i would really want and the, this is probably going to sound silly because it's part nintendo part uh Play, uh, Sony PlayStation. I want Street Fighter. I, I I want them to make a full version of like Super Street Fighter Alpha Six or whatever that has every freaking character from start to finish. Have it where it has you know arcade mode from get go. Just enough of this, you know, only on one console. That that's one game that should you know be on on a Xbox or at least that's what I would want. Um, as far as another one from PlayStation, we kind of have, but I want some of the the modes that are from the original would be MotorStorm. That that was like my outside of like Gran Turismo. That was my go to, you know, racer smash them up like Road Rash, but with you know buggies and motorcycles and and trucks and stuff. But uh, those are the main two. But for PC, there's a game that I have my eyes on. It's not a let's say it's not a, a series or a well-known game, let's say, but it is something that's probably going to be kind of difficult to bring to console. And that's Ex escape from Turkov. Um, right now, vigor has some of the elements of it without, you know, the extreme, you know, hard, no HUD type of setup where you have the only way that you'll know how many rounds you have is by, you know, taking the magazine out, looking at it or, or checking the, uh, the chamber or stuff like that. So, Hopefully it doesn't get that technical, but something along those lines where you have a combination of live uh, players and bots where you're, you know, basically scavenging and things like that would almost be like my perfect version of like the dark zone from the division, but in, you know, just one mode or one type of game. So kind of a weird list, but Street Fighter, definitely. Um, Motorstorm, we kind of have with Onrush, but... Escape from Tarkov is, is the one that I see at P on PC that I hope somehow they can figure out a way to get it over to Xbox and preview or something. Cool, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and do my picks, okay? I mean, most of them have already been put out there, but uh, obviously for PlayStation, Sony, um, I'm going with God of War. Um, now, I, I don't necessarily... I'm not the biggest Uncharted fan. I don't know why. I, I, don't, I don't know why. I always felt like Uncharted was a little overrated. Now, I may be on the, the, the small vocal minority who thinks that, but I always thought it was a little bit overrated. I was never too enthralled with the, the gameplay. You know, the characters were great. The characters are fantastic. The gameplay was a little generic, a little generic at times. You know, it kind of got a little repetitive, but the, 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 
locales were great in the game. The graphics obviously were phenomenal. Obviously, the character dialogue is great, but I feel like the gameplay was always a little shaky. So I'm going with Kratos, God of War. I'd love to have it on Xbox. Um, it's a phenomenal game. I've been a huge fan since the first one came out. It's one of the games that I just sit back and I'm like, God damn it. Every time I see it, I'm like, I wish I could play this on Xbox. You know, I, I have played it multiple times on, on uh, PlayStation. Uh, and for Nintendo, uh, I'm going with Zelda. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge Zelda fanboy, if you guys don't know. I'm a huge Zelda fanboy when it comes to Zelda. My favorite all-time game ever, no matter what system, is Zelda Ocarina of Time on Nintendo 64. So it doesn't matter what system it's on, but I love Zelda. That's, on that's my I mean, best friend's favorite game of all time, too. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite game of all time. And um, I just, I love Zelda so much. Like I it just, uh, every time I hear it or, or see it, you know, Breath of the Wild came out, I almost passed out. I almost lost my <laughs> shit. You know, I, it just, <laughs> I almost lost my shit. So, I just I love Zelda so much. Uh, PC, I, I can't really think of one that that stands out. I can't really think of one that stands out really at all, honestly, um, on PC. So I'm gonna just go with those two. I'll, give, I'll give you I'll give you your PC one, World of Warcraft. What? Ah, I don't. I don't, really, <laughs> I don't, I don't really, I, that's more so new speed. I think Noof is is a World of Warcraft. Maybe Hearthstone, right? Noof, I think yeah. you're in the. I I'm think a you're in the. World of Warcraft. No, no, I'm a huge, I'm a huge World of Warcraft. I don't like anything on PC. Uh, I'm just not a PC guy, and I couldn't stand World of Warcraft. Uh, it's not my not my cup of tea. Never got into uh, it. I played I played I played World of Warcraft for years, man. Like I did arena, like gladiator types, like everything, man. Like I went high rank. It was just yeah, nice, so <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Okay, cool. So we we do have another topic. I was actually gonna leave this one for next week's show, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw it. And we got a few minutes to spare here before we go ahead and close everything out. Once again, everybody that is watching live, I appreciate you guys so much. If you have not already done it and you're new here, please go subscribe to the channel. It helps me out quite a bit. Leave a like on the, the podcast. That also helps out the videos be seen as well. Uh, I am gonna leave these gentlemen's information here on the video. That way, you guys can follow them on their social media accounts if they have a YouTube channel or what the, whatever the case. May may be um but this last one is kind of a cool one as well so gaming guilty pleasures man as always we're all gamers and we all get on fucking twitter and we talk about these games and you know we're hardcore and you know, battlefield and destiny and but we all have some shit that we play that we don't really talk about so i really want to let the skeletons out the closet so that my little pony game new you're gonna have to talk about it all right i know we didn't want to bring it up new, we got it we got to talk about it <laughs> all right so we're gonna start with with you on this one new. do you have like a gaming guilty pleasure where you don't really talk about it, but you really enjoy like a, a game. You're like, eh, it's not really a popular opinion, but <laughs> I do enjoy playing. Well, the first one is Nude Twister. That game's always a lot harder when you make it. <laughs> 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 uh, and let me tell you, boy, uh, Nude is pretty flexible. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's right. Just uh, red foot green. You keep your ass clean, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 but anyway, realistically, I'm, you know, I got to go. I got to say Minecraft. Cause every, every time I fire up Minecraft, and I took a lot of heat from this a while back, Actually, Luca gave me grilled me because she saw me playing Minecraft and made fun of me. She probably still does. Uh, so Minecraft is one of those guilty pleasures that I. You know, it's one of those dink around games that I pick up every once in a while when I don't feel like playing something that's too. Um, I know complex. You just want something simple to f just kind of figure around, build some shit, you know, that sort of stuff. So yeah, Minecraft. And every time I play that game, I always feel like there's a bunch of people looking me up on Xbox going, Oh, noobs playing Minecraft. And they start laughing, you know? So uh, <laughs> that would have to be my guilty pleasure. I guess. <laughs> okay. So you fuzzy, man, I, I know you got one fuzzy. <laughs> right now it's probably Sims four. Cause it's, it's a toss up between playing architect. Cause I like just like building floor plans and things like that. Maybe it was the you know interior de decorator career I probably should should have pursued or something. But, you know, just building, <laughs> just building like houses and things like that in that game, and then just you know watching The Sims do crazy stuff. I haven't gotten to the point where I've like locked them in rooms with no food and stuff like that. But yeah, it, it's just one of those random games. It's like oh, I don't I don't even do uh, the I, I basically have the cheat code for all the money, so it's like I'm not worried about you know any any gamer score or anything like that from it yeah. it's like oh i'll just play this for an hour or so and it's like two hours later or three hours later it's like wow i've i've, I've sunk all those hours into the game <laughs> <laughs> yeah, symptom score is that game for me right now <laughs> nice nice I, I my wife actually has symptoms for she actually has some sports. So 
Um, cool, cool, awesome. Man. Sims is actually a pretty cool game. So, Zalker, it's on you, buddy. You got you got to let the cat out the bag, brother. All right, All right. So, the thing I had like a lot of guilty pleasure with right now is I have a couple. So, one is Rocket League. Everybody, you can see me playing it randomly. Like, I don't know if that's guilty pleasure, but a lot of people don't play it as much as I do. Like, I'm like actually good at the game. Like, I try aerialing and I try like you know boosting in the air. Like, I'm just I like the game <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, hardcore. Bro. hardcore. <laughs> like, I want to rank up. I want to win. I'm just an, I'm just an awesome. The other one would be World of Warcraft for 13 years. Like every, every time I'm like, I'm done with this game, I'll get the expansion and then I'll level up. I'm just an ass like that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, I felt like there was another one, but I can't think of it. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the games that I played the most. Um, yeah, I had this other one in my head and I literally just lost it. So now I'm irritated. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. If it, if it comes to you before I finish mine, let us know. So mine, right. I, actually, I actually have two. I actually have two of them, right? So... Uh, all right, so <laughs> one is Roblox. Ro and it, I know it seems kind of silly, but uh, I have I have a six year old daughter. My kids play it. My wife play it. I actually enjoy some of the game modes. They're pretty creative within Roblox. They have like this fart game that we play all the time. <laughs> you just the whole of just like Call of Duty, you just fart on each other. You have like fart bomb, <laughs> fart grenades, fart AC one thirty, all kind of crazy shit. Fart nukes. It just it's it's insane. But it's one of them games where I don't think about anything. I just have fun. And, we're just farting everywhere and just farting people off the map and it's crazy. But Roblox <laughs> is one. Of <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, I feel myself losing subscribers as I as I keep talking. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not subscribing <laughs> as you're talking. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's the thing. Don't don't play with Blam. He'll fart you off the map. <laughs> I, feel like I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting pink eye already. I know, right? I don't fart on the pillow. All right. <laughs> Either way, and the and the next one and the next one is. Uh, actually, it's it's a game that I don't know. It, I, I I really really enjoy playing Plants vs Zombie Two Garden Warfare. Um, <laughs> I just I play it and I just I don't know. I just I enjoy the shit out of it. Like I got all these characters leveled up and maxed out. And I just I'm still grinding right now to try and get all the abilities. Believe it or not, the game's like what three and a half four years old at this point. And like it's just I just enjoy it. It's, I have a, a really good time. I play it with my wife a lot. You guys will see me on quite a bit actually playing it. Uh, usually it's with her or with my, one of my kids or so to speak. So I really, really enjoy that game. And I am not ashamed to say it. Right, Noof? <laughs> Absolutely. Right, Noof? You got to jump in here with me to save face. Right, Noof? Right, okay, man. Good. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, I've played that along with you as well. It's, it's, yeah. it's not a bad game. It's, it's one of those games where it's like if you could imagine plants and zombies in a Call of Duty setting, that's basically what it's yeah, like, and it's, and it's got a lot of different modes, a lot of different maps. So it, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So it just, I, I kind of remember my other one. Just when you're done, tell me. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever played Warcraft Three, like the RTS game, but I used to play. Um, which one we call it? The, the user made, like the user created maps. Like they allow people to create their own maps and game types. There's this game type called Footies. <laughs> Where all you had was like a base and a hero and then a bunch of like soldiers spawn and it was their footy soldiers, like you know, boots on the ground. And yeah. you just have armies against like you know, like it's a free for all, like eight eight people free for all with just a bunch of footies going at it. I spent countless hours in that damn thing. Countless. So that's one. Nice. There you go. There, that's 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 a deep that's a deep cut. If anybody well, even knows next, what the hell that my is. My follow up question is that do you have a girlfriend? You have a, a girlfriend? Yeah, actually, I, I, throughout this whole time, I've had right now I don't, but I had two serious ones throughout these whole time. Hey, 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 none hey! Of them, none of them were gamers, man. I got, I got game. Don't even front. <laughs> <laughs> too much, too much, too much. <laughs> so once again, guys, that is going to be it for the show. We're going to wrap things up on that note for damn sure. All right, but uh, I've had so much fun here today. I am going to let everybody around the panel let you know where they can find them, uh, either be on Twitter or Xbox and or, uh, you know, just, you know, essentially here on YouTube as well. Um, so we're going to start with you, Noof, the guest or man of the hour, man. Where can everybody <laughs> find you, brother? Well, just let me give one piece of advice to your viewers out there. If you're making love to your old lady, it's probably not a wise idea to hum the old Tetris commercial song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's not going to get you very far. You won't get the top level. Uh, but anyway, guys, no, it's always a great, uh, great to be here. Great to be with these guys, and you know, uh, it's kind of cool too because Fuzzy's been a, a big supporter of a lot of the podcasts have been on over the last while, and uh, just recently uh, started talking to Zalker. We started playing games. We're gonna have 
having a blast and we're overdue by the way oh, yeah. And, um yeah and it's always great to be here with you blam great intro tonight uh thanks for having me it's a great podcast you got a you got a good cast of characters here man and um yeah, I've had, I had a lot of fun tonight, actually. I was quite into it and uh, good topics and uh, kept the show rolling. So thanks for having me here, and uh, thanks to the chat for jumping out and supporting. Appreciate it, man. Oh, by the way, Noof, uh, I am expecting that check on the back end for the Roddy Dangerfield line, but uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> 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 I'm just joking. But, yeah, no, it's an honor to have you on, Noof, man. You, you've you always been one of my favorites. You know, you like I said, Rodney Dangerfield, the Xbox, man, for real. Um, and I've always looked up to you. You've always very knowledgeable, very funny. If you guys have not been following you, please go follow everything he's doing right now. If you follow me, please go follow him. All right. Support everything he's doing, man. He puts on a fantastic show, fantastic content, very knowledgeable, all around good guy. OK, so follow him, everything he does. Uh, We're going to go ahead and go ahead with you, Fuzzy. Let everybody know where they can find you, brother. Hey, I'm on uh, Twitter, Fuzzy underscore Belvedere on the Xbox Live, Fuzzy Belvedere. Um it's been great with you guys, uh, you know, talking games with you guys. Glad to have you on here, Noof. Uh, haven't played uh, Battlefield or you no know, Battlefront in a while, but probably have to do that sometime or Vermintide or something like that. But uh, Amen. Yeah, it's been an awesome time. Great, great talking with Zocker and you, Blam. But man, great, just great show, great cast. For sure, for sure. All right, it's on you, Zocker. Let it, you new guy. You gotta, you gotta get that plug out of there, man. Come on. Again, man, uh, <laughs> new to the community, but not new to gaming, right? Like I always uh-huh. say, um, yeah, oh, man, yeah. you guys, everybody, you can find me at um, at shocked eighty seven on Twitter, and then you can go to my YouTube channel, Zalker eighty seven Z A L K E R eight seven. Just look it up. You'll find me. I have some content out there, some videos. I haven't put a video out there in about a couple days since I think Gamescom because I've been super busy, but I hope to get one out either tomorrow or the day after. Um, yeah, and it was a great time talking. Noof, as always, man, overdue to play some games, but man, it was great catching up, great talking games. PTK, you're the man. Fuzzy, you're always the best, bud. And everybody listening and watching, thank you so much for the support. Honestly, we, we really appreciate it, every single one of you. And uh, yeah, it's a great show tonight, guys. All right. And uh, last but not least, the uh, man with the playing the host with the most i just came up with that by the way everybody <laughs> ptk blam man follow me across the board everywhere uh xbox live ptk blam on twitter ptk blam as well also youtube once again please subscribe to the channel if you guys have not already done so we thank you guys so much for the support every saturday we've been getting non-stop support every saturday you guys have been awesome everybody out there watching the youtube land um i have a great cast here i i welcome everybody on the show um, you know, open invitations. I may already start doing something a little different where I grab a subscriber, but we'll kind of go over that a little bit later and bring him on the show. But um, I just thank you guys for all the support here on the channel. Once again, catch us next week at the same time, same place. Uh, we're going to be rocking out once again with some more great topics. So thank you guys for spending uh, your time here with us this evening on the Shop Podcast. We'll catch you guys a little bit later. We're out of here. Peace out. Night, everybody. Later. Boing.